Hello, friends. I am here in my living room, not in my office. I kind of thought that it might be fun to do hot seat coaching in a hot seat. It's not really hot, but it's cozy. We're doing cozy seat coaching. But I'm um, super excited because if you missed my posts about it, I've never done this before. I've kind of thought about it and brainstorming about how could I bring people on to rapid fire help provide value, help answer questions live. Because, you know, we've done Q&As before, like when I have you put in your questions ahead of time, which I want to do another one up soon, but um, putting in your questions ahead of time and then I answer them like this, which, you know, that works too. However, I thought that it would be really fun to do hot seat coaching because here's the thing. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have any technical difficulties because I uh, haven't done like a shared Facebook live before. However, I have seen that when it pops up like this person's watching that it, you can tap on it and say add to the video. So hopefully my plan doesn't backfire and hopefully it still works out that way. So um, anyway, I'll, but while we're waiting for some people to, and, and what, if you're here and you've got a question, definitely don't hesitate to try to, you know, get my attention, see if we can get you on here. I think that would be really awesome. In the meantime, I thought I would take this opportunity while we're waiting for people to come on and bring them on to the hot seat that we could, I could talk to you a little bit about my latest offer. Maybe you saw the post, I think, when did I announce it? On Sunday. So this brand new offer that I have available, the VIP one-on-one -on -one coaching is something that I've never offered before because here's the thing. I, back in the day before I started this business as like a, a new RD and what we were taught to do in school um, is to do like a one session, hour long session, sit down, give them all the information. But what I found was that that actually really overwhelmed people and it wasn't beneficial to the client and it wasn't doing, you know, it wasn't helping them be su successful and it wasn't helping me be successful. And so that's why I created my coaching programs to be structured in the way that they are so that there's ongoing accountability so that we're not trying to do everything all at once. And that's so we're checking in every week and building upon each other. So that's why I have my program structured the way that they are and why it's usually a six months commitment. However, in the, what has it been now, a year and eight months, maybe a year and nine months, no, eight months, that I um, have been working, you know, having this business and, and providing nutrition coaching online to people, I, I really saw this need for it would basically like to tip your toe, dip, dip your toes into the water. Because here's the thing, um, investing in yourself is scary, especially if you don't really know if you click with the coach, if you like the coaching style, um, and kind of like getting that taste before having to commit to six months. And so that's why I wanted to create this new offer of, okay, let's sit down for 60 minutes. Let's iron out whatever questions you want to ask me. Let's come up with a really specific roadmap and, and I'll help you create this plan for you to reach your goals and kind of having this plan so you feel a little bit more confident moving forward. And then if you do choose to further invest in a coaching program, Actually, the entire cost of the VIP intensive, which is $149, will be used as a credit towards your coaching program. You don't have to go to a coaching program. You can just do the one one-time VIP, come up with a really great plan. I can help you with macros. I can help you with meal planning. I can help you with uh, workout routines. I can, there are so many different things that I can help you with, whatever questions you have. Um, we can do all of that. And then you can be on your way or you might think, okay, now I have this plan 
and Zoe and I really click and I want to keep working with her. And then you can use that credit to help you actually go, you know, get a, that credit towards the coaching program. So that is, that's the nitty gritty. Um, I will put the link to the, the information page basically has all the details of the new offer, as well as the link to go ahead and book it. So I'll put that link in the comments. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out because this, this is for you. Honestly, like I really wanted to create an opportunity that was at a lower price point so that you didn't have to feel like you're committing to too much all at once and to dip your toes in so you feel super confident. And so I'm really, really excited. This is the first week we've been promoting it. So hopefully you take advantage and we will be talking soon. Um, so, so far we don't have anybody here to be in the hot seat coaching, but don't worry. I had one of my really awesome, um, graduated clients. She actually texted me that she was on her way home from work and she wanted to be able to make it live. But if she wasn't able to, if I could go ahead and answer her question, she had a couple different questions. So this will be the perfect opportunity. I'll go through her questions and then hopefully we'll be able to pull some other people onto the hot seat coaching and we'll get your questions answered too. All right. So, um, we have, Peter has a couple questions about weight loss. So I'll go ahead and bring you on the video. You can ask your questions. We're gonna do like five minutes. So make sure you are ready to be camera ready. And we will get everybody going. So we're gonna do like five minutes per person. Still says adding. All right, great. So we're doing five minutes per person. And what question do you want to spitfire hot seat coach style? I had a question about the base metabolic rate. They say that the less calories you eat, you're going to lose weight faster, right? But like if you're prepping, if you, if you cut the calories too quickly, then your base metabolic rate lowers and then if you start eating more calories again, then you get the fat back. I'm a little confused on that, basically. Basically, just like, okay. how are you supposed, what's the proper way to lose weight? Because if you just cut the calories way too fast, then you'll lose a bunch of weight, but then your body's gonna basically just like, that's gonna be normal for your body. Okay, I, I got your question. This is a great question. It's something I talk about all the time. So the basal metabolic rate is basically how many calories your body needs just to stay alive. And we can calculate that using your height, weight, age, sex. And then that just is like, all right, if I were to stay in a bed and stay alive, how many calories do I need? That's the basal metabolic rate. And then we have to factor on your activity factor because obviously you don't lay in a bed and stay alive. We have to factor in work and workouts and all those different types of things. So then that brings us to your theoretical maintenance calories. And I like to say theoretical because it's just on paper. Uh, basically, what calculations say and what real life says are oftentimes different. So when I'm working with a client and we have, all right, calculated maintenance calories, but they've been maintaining or even gaining weight at a lower weight or at a lower calorie, likely that's because of diet history, being in a caloric deficit, too big of a caloric deficit for too long, which I think you were asking about, like eating, you know, too little food and maybe struggling to lose weight. And so then if you go all the way up to that maintenance calories, your body won't know what to do with it. It'll be like, oh my gosh, I have all this extra energy, but I've been starving. So I may as well store it as fat because I don't know when I'm going to get more fuel. So that's when doing a reverse diet would be really helpful to go from this low, low calories to slowly and incrementally bring you up to maintenance, be happy at maintenance for a little bit, and then we can slowly work through a more sustainable caloric deficit to make sure we're hanging on to muscle, but learn losing fat. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, definitely. And then also I heard, well, somebody said, I don't know if it's true or not, that 
however long it took you to gain that excess weight, that's how long it's going to take you to lose that weight. Is that, is that true? Or can you lose weight fast? Like if it took me like, or it took somebody five years to gain 40 pounds of fat, is it going to take that person five years to lose the 40 pounds of fat or can you lose it quicker? I've heard that before too, but I definitely usually shoot for a pound to max two pounds of weight loss per week. So, you know, you can do it faster, but I really encourage people to recognize that, hey, this isn't going to happen overnight. And if you want it to actually stay off, that's why we don't want to lose weight too quickly because we actually want those, those pounds to stay off. That makes okay. sense. Yeah. That sounds Great better question. Than... Yeah, thanks. All right, I'm going to bring Julie on now. All right. So we will... How do I? Okay. All right, Julie, you ready? Oh, and can't join your broadcast at this time. So Julie, it doesn't look like either you are still watching <laughs> or um, maybe you're disabled or on there or something. So if you're able to come back, like maybe come off and come back on and then I'll, I'll try to get you on here again. Um, but in the meantime, I'll get to the questions that I was asked beforehand so we can talk through that. So um, she asked me about meal replacement. So shakes, meal replacement, um, bars, that sort of thing. So what she was saying was that, no, oh, here, let's see, Julie, are you here? Let's try to bring you on. Oh, it keeps saying unable. It says, Unable to add guests, they can't join your broadcast at this time. So Julie, if you want to type your question in the comment section, and then I'll go ahead and answer it this way, since it doesn't seem like I can bring you on live, okay? But I definitely want to answer your question. So anyway, the question I had was about the meal replacement. So the person that texted me said, so I want to be kind of like having these meal replacements that I've heard that they're a good option, but I normally feel hungry after um, eating them. And so they're not very satisfying, which I think is so true. If we think about those meal replacement, whether they're shakes or bars, maybe they're between 200 and 300 calories. And if they're a little bar or a shake or something, maybe they have 20 grams of protein, 30 grams of um, carbs, and let's say like seven grams of fat or something. Think about how much food you could eat for that. You could have a, a nice big portion of chicken. You could have a huge plate of veggies. You could have some rice. You could have avocado. You could have a really big, nice, filling, satisfying meal that would be way more satisfying than just a bar or a shake, which would help with your hunger and help you actually feel more satisfied so you're not hungry again sooner. However, I, I definitely think that having like some sort of bar or shake could be helpful to kind of keep it more as a snack to tide you over, not as a meal replacement. Um, I think that meal replacements backfire because you end up being hungrier and then overindulge later on, or maybe you like feel super hungry and so you're less likely to portion control so I would rather you eat more food, a bigger volume of food for those same nutrients to feel more full and satisfied. And then if you're really wanting to have some sort of protein bar or shake, maybe adding a piece of fruit to it or even just having it by itself, but more as just a snack in between meals. That would be my main recommendation. Um, because if you think of meal replacement versus just a protein bar or shake or whatever, the meal replacement is going to be higher in carbs, higher in fat. And so it is going to truly try to mimic more of a full meal when, why, why do that? If you could actually eat a meal and, and have to have your body do the work of digesting it and feel more satisfied. So that's my take on the meal replacements. And then the other question that you had was um, about the menstrual cycle. So you were saying, you know, what are some other considerations, nutrition and fitness wise, while on the cycle besides eating iron-rich foods, because that was something that you mentioned. So yes, iron-rich foods, red meat, 
But also you can do plant-based source of iron such as spinach, but with the plant-based sources of iron such as spinach, it's important to pair that with vitamin C because it actually helps with absorption because um, plant-based iron is not as bioavailable in our body. It's harder to absorb than the um, animal uh, source of, of iron. I'm trying again to see if I can bring Julie on because Oh, maybe she's gone. Um, you can put your question in later um, if you're watching, if you watch the replay or something. But um, so, so yes, yeah, so plant, plant-based iron is less bioavailable, not as easily absorbable as um, animal-based iron. But if you pair some of your vitamin C, whether that's some you know, lemon juice, or you have orange slices on your spinach salad, something like that, that can really help with the absorption. Something else to consider with the menstrual cycle is like cravings, right? Like maybe chocolate cravings or those sorts of things, or you're just kind of craving like comfort food. And that's normally because the blood sugars are unstable. So we really want to prioritize making sure that you are stabilizing your blood sugars throughout the day and getting balanced meals with protein. And, and I know that probably like when you're craving something, the last thing that you're wanting to eat is like a balanced meal with lean protein and complex carbs and fruits and vegetables, but it's actually going to make your body feel so much better. And by nourishing it and keeping those stable blood sugars and energy levels will definitely make those cravings actually go away because when we get a sugar craving because of low blood sugar, it's because basically your body is trying to bring up your blood sugar as quickly as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to basically give a, a craving of something sugary because if you eat something sugary, that's the fastest way to get your blood glucose higher because it, you know, like brought right into the, the bloodstream, and there you go. Um, so if we can kind of avoid having those low blood sugars by having balanced meals throughout the day, not going too long without meals, making sure you have multiple macronutrients with your meals, that will help with stabilizing those blood sugars. And something else to keep in mind, not necessarily nutrition related, but more um, exercise related is that I know that for a lot of people, um, exercising while on your menstrual cycle is not really something that you want to do or that you do do. However, I will say that um, there is plenty of research to show that exercising can actually help with cramps because you're actually moving your body and it can help move stuff along, if you will. But you are actually strongest during this period as well because you have higher testosterone levels. Um, and so that actually can help you get, um, you know, being able to increase, increase your strength gains. You, if you're able to like feel, if you get yourself to the gym and, and you feel good about it, then that's the time to push yourself. So, um, you know, like I said, Sometimes the hardest part is just getting up and feeling up to it. But usually once you do, it really makes a really great big difference. All right. So um, I'm glad that we got at least one hot seat coaching moment in here, which, you know, this was the first time we did it. So we didn't know how it was going to go. I think, you know, all in all, it went pretty well. It would have been fun to have some more people on. But like I said, it was the first time. We can absolutely do this again. And in fact, I hope that this you, you watch this as the replay or whatever or live. And you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. I want to get in there and ask a question. So we will be definitely be doing it again if you want to, of course. But um, like I said to Julie and whoever else, if you are watching this and you would like to just type in your question in the comment section, I will be sure to answer it um, afterwards in the comment section. So anyway, oh, here we go. We got Deb here. Great timing, Deb, because I was actually just about to finish the video. 
So if you have a question ready, I'm going to pull you into the video right now. So hopefully you are camera ready and get your questions ready to be answered. So we are adding you to the video, Deb. Hopefully it works. Just says blinking, adding. So we'll see. I'm excited, so it was good timing. And if anybody else, like I said, has a question, definitely take advantage of this opportunity. And we're waiting for Deb's camera to turn on. Well, maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. If you want to type your question in the question box, Deb, you're more than, ah, we got her. Yay. Well, welcome. How are you? Thanks. Good. How are you? I'm good. Well, I'm super glad that you're here. I don't know if you heard me say I was just about to close out. So you had perfect yes. timing. So yep. what is your question? What can I help you with? Um, I don't have any questions. I'm just going to listen. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. All right. Well, if you ha if you can think of anything really quickly while you're here, I'd be happy to answer. But um, okay. if not, that's okay too. No. Yeah. No. I just was on just listening. Okay. Wonderful. Well, um, maybe go back and watch the the replay later on because we've got okay. some goodies in the beginning, Perfect. of course. But um, I will I will okay. exit you out of here awesome. so you're not on camera okay. anymore. Thanks. Thanks for being a good sport. Uh huh. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, on that note, well, that was fun. We got to have two people in here. We got some questions. Sorry, I clapped. I'm sure that was super loud in the earbuds. I've noticed that the background noise with the earbuds are super loud. So anyway, hopefully that wasn't super loud clap in, in your ears with that microphone. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. If you're watching this and you have a question, be sure to ask it. If you'd like to see me do this again and you want to be pulled in for hot seat coaching, definitely let me know because I think that this could be a really great addition to our group and continue adding value and helping you guys get to those goals. So have a great evening and we will talk to you later. Bye.